So we heard a lot about the support of the library to our uh, speakers so far. And we have Dr. Charlene Maxi harris She is an associate professor and chair of the Research and Instructional Services Department at UNL. Um, her research areas are diversity initiatives and cultural competencies in academic libraries and library instruction for first-generation college students. And we have Erica. Uh, she's an assistant professor and social sciences librarian at UNL. She is a doctoral candidate in educational psychology and has a master's degree in library science, a master's in educational technology from University of Arizona. Her research interests <coughs> are investigating bias in students' evaluations of teaching, expectancy effects in the classroom, and information literacy. So you're lucky to have two speakers today from the library. So let's welcome Erica and Dr. Sherman. Thank you very much. We're also going to try to share a microphone, so bear with us. Um, there's a lot of information we're going to go over in 15 minutes, and so we've tried to make your life a little easier instead of taking notes. Uh, we've made a little brief guide. You can follow along. It has all of our speaker notes in as well. This is a tiny URL for it. You can reference it later on. So you don't have to try to remember what we're saying. Uh, as for that, uh, Charlene will uh, introduce a little bit about U of A libraries, or U of A. UNL libraries, excuse me. <laughs> So welcome. Um, we're glad that you're able to get to our one-stop search, and that's our website. Um, from here, you can access the items that we have from our catalog, but also you can also get this through Google as well. We know everyone likes Google, we do too. It's just when and how to do it. So I was just going to give you kind of an a overview of some of the things that are not intuitive about our homepage. And quick search that searches everything that's in our catalog. That's books, ebooks. Um, we'll have some journal articles that you'll find there, some images. So it, it's a, a really nice catch-all. Articles, although that's really um, um, a great place to to begin for undergrads. Okay, I'd like you to, to spend some more time, and we'll go over some of the e-resources and some place that we really want you to spend a little bit more time. Um, as you're doing your research. Images are the databases that we have um, that focus on uh, images. We already take care of the copyright licensing, so those are things that you can definitely import into your presentations as well. Course reserves is just that. If you're teaching classes, um, then that will be where you <coughs> keep your um, reserve list of materials. Um, so, some other things that I think of our interest to you, the Digital Commons is one, is where we keep our institutional repository. That's what libraries are doing now. When you complete your dissertation um, and your project, if it's a written, we'll actually deposit it here. This is where our faculty um, keep their documents and they um, provide access to the world, basically, and those things. And all departments will also have some of those um, items as well. Hopefully all of you have been using the UNL Libraries website already. All right, so some of the stuff might be an old hat for you, but some of these things might be a little, little bit new. The next thing we're going to talk about, we actually have two accounts that you really need to have to be able to take advantage of all the resources that are available through UNL Libraries. The very first one is the My Library account. Um, this, you know, more traditionally, you can use the My Library account to manage your checked out items. Um, so from home, there's my library account. You just log on. You can view what you've got checked out. You can also view your, your reading history. So if you happen to return a huge stack of books, which I've done this many times, and said, oh, no, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I have no idea what the book was, but I need to reference that again. <coughs> if you so off, you can actually set it up to keep your reading history within this. You can go back and log on and view what that was, recheck that book out. Um, additionally, and most importantly, probably, how many of you like to work from off campus? Yeah, almost all of us. Um, this is the account that you'll use to actually log in to any of the UNL databases remotely. So a little thing will pop up. This screen will actually pop up before you can actually access Eric and move inside the info things like that. So this is, this is account number one. The second account is delivery slash interlibrary loan. So this one is actually a great account because you know it has the traditional, if we don't own it, we will get it from another university for you and have it sent to campus for you to pick up. Um, but this is also the way that you request having materials sent from any of our branch campus libraries. So if there's something at CY Thompson that you want sent to Love Library, that's not a problem. Also, if 
for whatever reason, there is a journal that is not actually available digitally, but we have it in print at the library, and you don't actually want to come to the library to get it. You just use your delivery slash interlibrary loan. Someone on our staff will go and get it from the shelf, make a copy of the article or the book chapter that you need, and email it to you. So this is the account that really helps to kind of speed things up and connect you with the resources materials that you need more, more than anything. And it's also very quick. Um, articles, if it has to come from another institution, generally less than 48 hours. I think they like to say up to a week just in case it's really kind of difficult to find. Um, books as well, if you have to have something shipped over here from another lit institution, up to a week generally. It's here within a couple of days usually. And it's almost always free. If there are fees attached to it, we'll always contact you first to make sure you're willing to pay any money. And if you're not, then we'll look for alternative resources as well to try to get your hands on what you need. Another new service that we have is UBORROW, and this is one which gives you the advantage <coughs> to be able to leave out the middleman. You know that you're getting materials from the University of Michigan, for example. Um, they have a lot of the things that you're looking for. You can actually search for <coughs> items here um, in UBORROW and then be able to request it. Again, it's all connected through our delivery system, as Eric has already touched on. But it, it saves you some time if you know you have to have budget <coughs> materials. Um, if, you, if you're not sure whether it's uh, available in print or it's, it's supposed to be available electronically and you can't get access, go through our delivery service. We'll make sure that we get this um, for you. But it does save you time because it leaves out the middleman of, of having a person actually submit that for you on your behalf. And it just allows you to go directly <coughs> into their catalogs. You'll see the list of, for your item, if it's at University of Iowa, uh, Michigan, um, Penn State, and then you can actually request that there. And usually they say within a, um, a week that you can get the materials. Um, and the checkout time is longer. So just an FYI there. Library databases. This is probably what everyone is most interested in using and what you're probably already more, most familiar with using. So UNL has a few hundred different databases that you can access. Um, we keep them, let's see, from the UNL Library's homepage under e-resources here. And this is where we kind of store all of the databases that we have and everything that you're going to be needing. We, they're organized according to many different ways. Of course, we've got the most popular databases up here. Databases by titles, if there's something that you're specifically looking for. Um, but also, we have them organized by <coughs> general subjects. So under social sciences, all the education majors. Um, we've kind of listed, that we've got 17 different databases listed underneath this category. But of course, depending on the research that you're doing, it might fall under a different category. So you just, you either talk to a librarian or you can kind of browse through these categories to figure out what you need. Um, of course, Having to jump in and search through all these databases can be very time consuming. We have recommended <coughs> a number of different ones that you can use and, you know, to kind of get your research going. Of course, Eric is going to be one of the, mo the most useful ones for the majority of your research that you're doing. Eric is the Educational Research Information Clearinghouse, started by the government in the 60s. Um, and it is the largest uh, index of education research out there. And so you'll want to use that um, if you're looking for anything education related it's like info when you're looking for tests and measures and if you're looking for psychological research that has to do with education of course that that's another big one that you would want to be using jstor that tends to be a very general type database that covers pretty much any subject it used to be kind of focused on historical research but now it's really opened up um, so we do recommend a lot of people test that out if you're struggling finding the research that you're looking for and dissertations and theses would be the fourth one, fourth one that we um, recommend uh, when you are working on your own dissertation or thesis, it is very helpful to either see examples of dissertations that have been written in a similar topic, or to see dissertations that have been approved by your committee chair. So you can actually go into here and type in your committee chair's mem a name, uh, limit that to your committee member, or by your department, or UNL, or something like that, and actually see examples. And this really helps to kind of mitigate some of the fear and anxiety that a lot of us have when we're working on these big projects. Again, to find all these resources from the UNL Library's homepage, it's just under e-resources at the very top link here. And of course, if you're off campus, you'll use your My Library account to log on. <laughs> the other resource that we have, we know that everyone's using Google. What we've done is we've been able to provide a link from the Google Scholar 
that will link back to the materials that we have that you can get full text and get the PDF from. So this is where our um, Google Scholar uh, link is. It's from our e-resources page, as Erica just showed you. And this is where you'll be able to, um, you see it's broken down by the articles, the time frames, and then the find this for me is where you will go to get the PDF. Um, this will get you back to our connector page. So anytime you're doing a database and you're looking up items, this is, you're no longer on the UNL page and site. And so we pay for you to have access to these resources outside of our institution. This is our intermediary page that connects you back to services and back to the library system, basically. And so the get it for me, and you're going to see some different wording. We're trying to <coughs> make everything a lot uh, more intuitive and user friendly. So, as with everyone else, if you see things that say WebBridge instead, and those, those were the terms that we used before, and there's been a lot of changes, that's going to be your, your bridge or your connection back to the library page and the connections that we have. So, through here, then you'll be able to get this article um, either through Prospera. <laughs> um, you can requ request delivery is probably the best place to go to because what happens is you'll get caught in different loops. Sometimes you have to put in your search again, but we're going to keep working on that. Um, also, I'd like to point out to re a report a problem, great way to let us know if something's not working. Um, with all of our different connections to thousands of uh, e-resources and journals, sometimes it's not always going to work very nicely. So um, let us know. Real quick about Google Scholar is if you are working from off campus and you want to hook in those results to UNL's um, results, just go under settings and library links. When you're off campus, it already knows you're at UNL and try to help that where it'll bring up that find it for me thing. But off campus, just search for UNL and that way it'll bring up find it for me. It'll connect to our subscription databases and that way you can find <coughs> the article full text without being charged for it or have to pay. Um, data management, how many of you are planning on or already in the process of collecting large data sets for your research? Right, so the libraries have recently started working with researchers and scholars on actually figuring out a way to manage data, especially when you're gearing up to write big grant proposals where you have to say, I'm going to store my data securely um, and in a way that's going to be accessible for the next X number of years. Uh, so we do have a pretty robust data management service ongoing right now. We have a data management librarian that you can schedule uh, data consulting with. And so if you ever want to meet, meet with Jenny, um, this is the page that you would go to here. Um, so this is so you can comply with your grant needs, um, figure out how you're going to organize the data, figure out the way that's going to uh, archive your data. So anything data related, come to the library and we can help you with that. The next item is browsing. This is a wonderful app. I love to show it because it saves you time and money and it works on your mobile <coughs> devices. So your iPads, um, your Android tablet, Kindle, your iPhone, all of these um, tools will connect you now to actually having a bookshelf, if you will, of the e-journals that we have available and that we've already paid for. So download the app. It's um, nice, you can get it from the App Store, um, and then you would choose your library. And when you choose your library, then that would be UNL Libraries. And then once you get it loaded, then what you can do is create this, um, basically, it is a virtual bookshelf. You can choose the journals that you want to see on a regular basis that can sit in your library um, bookshelf, my library, set that up as your bookshelf. You can also browse all these other subject and discipline areas and then save the articles that you want um, to be able to read later um, or to download to another um, reference management tool, which Erica will talk about in a little bit. But I, I get excited about it because I can do this on my phone. I can do this on my iPad. I can read articles um, when I'm sitting in the airports and everything. Once you get everything uh, connected, and that's the delivery system in my library account, then you can have access to all of these wonderful resources. So, I'm definitely a fan of this. The very last thing that we wanted to highlight are citation management tools. How many of you are using a citation management tool of some sort? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so how many of you are using Mendeley? Anybody using RefWorks through the libraries? Anybody using Zotero? Anybody using something else? What are you using? Uh, EndNotes. 
and notes. Yeah, and that would be the fourth one that we also can kind of support for. So, if you're here enough to write your dissertation, you know you're going to be managing a few hundred or thousand different citations or resources or something like that, um, and you know that you're going to have to play an A3 <coughs> citation style format. Um, so, before you get started, or even if you're in the midst of a project that doesn't matter at any time, familiarize yourself with one of these resources. Excuse me. There we go. Take a look at some of the resources out there. Um, I, myself, am a huge fan of Zotero. It is uh, something that's been around for over a decade now. It's created by George Mason University. It continues to be funded. It's very stable. Any of these tools would pretty much do the exact same thing. Um, basically, you're doing your research. You come across an online article. You click a button. Uh, it downloads into a folder on your computer. Then you're writing your, in your Word document. You need to insert a citation. There's a Word plugin you can install. Put your cursor down, click a button, inserts the citation. You're ready to create a bibliography. You click another button, it automatically generates your bibliography. You submit your journal article, and it's an APA format, and they say, no, we want Chicago style. And you're like, I don't know Chicago style. You go back into your Word document, click a button, change it to Chicago style, and your work is done for you. I can't say how handy these things are, especially things like Zotero that also have a cloud-based component. So let's say you like to work across five different machines like I do, including Macs or PCs or whatever. Um, you're jumping around, you don't have anything with you, but you happen to have this. You, you log on, click sync, all of a sudden you have all of the articles that you've been reading and making notes on. Um, again, this, this has saved my life on so many different occasions. Also, if you're co-authoring across the country or around the world and you want to share your art library or you want to be able to share your notes on stuff with this, all of these resources allow you to share your folders. So it's a really good collaboration tool. And again, that Word plugin makes your life so much easier as far as just clicking buttons and having things inserted directly into your documents. So um, any of these three resources, if you have questions about them or need training, the library can provide support for Mendeley, RefWorks, and Zotero, and actually EndNote as well. That would be the fourth one. So feel free to contact any of us and we can get you um, started on using those as well. And we are about done. And we should hear some cheers about the, the citation management. <laughs> I mean, woo-hoo. We're overwhelmed. Right, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, um, they're just, um, wonderful tools to use um, and of course we're out of time so we're not going to be able to talk about all these things but please ask us for help we have a, a variety of ways where you can get access to us you can email a library call us usually we have a chat box here but someone is someone's not online <coughs> also if you want to consult with um, either Erica or with any of us um, in the library feel free to use that as well and we will leave any, any questions, right? Yes. We'll open it up. I don't necessarily have a question. I was just going to share with my colleagues. Um, I went and met with the Ed Ad Research Librarian Specialist on Tuesday, and it is amazing what they can help you with. And all I did was send her like a little paragraph of here's kind of what I'm thinking about. And when I got there, she had a stack like this of search terms, possible journal articles, all kinds of things. And so it was huge. I know she's retired in a couple of weeks. Right. I'm sure someone's replacing her. Don't panic. Um, <laughs> okay, Eric. So it's, it, is, it is really a great way to start thinking about helping to narrow your topic, trying to find search terms, how to find keywords, and how to search efficiently and to really find just the research articles that we need, like <laughs> interviews and stuff. So I would just, yeah. Thank you. And that we do. We save you time. And all of us have backgrounds, or at least most of us have backgrounds in the areas that you're going to be, you're, you're studying in now. So, or we've worked on past projects, or we can be able to connect you to other researchers. So, we take the fear out of the liberty process. <laughs> other questions?